people that are not based here, they do not know where to locate things like ablution facilities. Where are you? They do not know where to locate um, emergency exits. But I will do that. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Mrula. Uh, through you, uh, Chair, um, for our ablutions, we'll be using the ones downstairs. The way we came through, you got through a door and there was a security on your left. Uh, just facing that uh, security, there are two, two bathrooms, both for men and women there. In terms of emergency exits, the same way, we will all congregate outside in the car parks here. I think that's all. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Farai and your team. Educators, uh, we were given the ground rules here. But uh, let me also throw one ground rule from the program director's office. I will say it in Venda. I'm at the university. Not only says word, when you want to go to the toilet, you take which direction. But these are the ground rules. Even the trains, as we tell you, we have to go to the toilet. So if you want to go out, you will get out there, you will get the usher to direct you to the toilet. Number two, last year, Six learners have been arrested here within the, the, the premises of the university. Boy at toilet, language You know what I'm talking about, educators and parents. So they will arrest you here. You will remain in custody. Nobody is going to help you. So please, Vananga, I can see you. You are good people. Don't even think about it. Now, our English Pongar comes in as an assassin at Tetemela and not at Tamela Donisa or Tea or Kamatokota or Tea. So please, let's behave well. Not forgetting what in the world Zori we still to have fun. I'm still not yet impressed. Nandere and everyone of a guy. No, no putana, no. But it is ever the Nova Pisa, but where and the Kamus. Because it's like you are afraid, I don't know. But anyway, let's move. Item number two, acknowledgements of guests. Uh, Faraya head, Professor Nechandama is around here. This is how we are going to do it. DJ will play the song. But after the presenter has done his or her part, what do we do? We clap hands when he or she is going back. Ropa Natir. That is how we are going to do our things. DJ, can you have a small a bit of a song when we invite Professor Nechandam, is it Professor Nechandam? Yes, to come and acknowledge the guest. DJ, Nito Vajite Nebo Dama Pungo, Aori, Nyembo Ezi, Chimachikiringa Zia Elana Na Petu Upo, Na Zipiro. Good morning, the Macheroni. Uh, are you good? Yes, I am good too. I will share any the guy. So my task is very simple. It's going to be quick. I want to also uh, ride on Dr. Murulana and uh, start by welcoming you to the University of Venda. Um, and you are my, our, our special guest today. These things that the program director was talking about. I thought, I no, it won't happen with uh, my kids here. 
They are great kids. As you say, Jacqueline, Jacqueline, and Gamlet, like young kids. Raise up your hands and down. Sit down. You are our VIPs today. We do not expect less from you because we know you are great kids. Your job is to be a student at school, a learner who wants to pass and nothing else. Your job is to study very hard and ace it so that one day you can find yourself at a university or at a Tibet college doing what kids are supposed to do, which is to be a kid and to go to school and to pass and to be one day like Dr. Murulan as a title. It doesn't just happen. And it most certainly doesn't start from what the program director was saying. There is a logic in everything. You're putting garbage into your life, you get garbage of life out of yourself. So don't go there, Vanangate. Welcome, and I'm acknowledging you. I also would like to acknowledge the program director because um, I'm acutely aware that um, he's passionate about making sure that occasions like this happen and um, making sure that you get the best experience when you come to visit for the GIA days. Let me also acknowledge Ivo Farai, Ivo Doctor, uh, uh, who, who, and, and professors who are part of the department that Dr. Murulana was indicating, uh, Geography and Environmental Sciences. Thank you very much. Year in and year out, you would like to do it better, so uh, my appreciation goes to you. I won't read everybody's name, but I know that uh, there are colleagues of us from uh, all the municipalities, Womudao, Womdanaro, Womato, Womaribate, Womaki, Womaluini, Womanda, Womaribandia and colleagues from um, the municipalities, Ch Collins, Chavani, Musina, Tulamela, Bembe, that I may miss because I don't have your names. Please uh, welcome. We know that as a university, we are incomplete without you. And as we also know from all cultures, from all traditions, we need to join hands. It takes the village, which is you and us, to raise these great kids that we have. And what you have done by just coming today and spending the day guiding and checking the kids is part of it. And so we are wanting to acknowledge your great deeds. Um, let's continue to collaborate. Our kids are vulnerable. Our kids are living in crazy times. There's so many influence that goes the opposite direction of what we want our kids to be. And so if we keep on joining hands and doing our bit, it will uh, be um, the kids that we are proud of one day. I may have missed. Um, other key stakeholders, Bakopta, Eri, SA, Surveyor General Lupompo, Office and Status A, Office of the Premier, um, 
Department of Education, of course, uh, and, and all other key stakeholders that I, I, I may have missed and not being able to mention. Uh, please, uh, we want to appreciate you. We want to say that occasions like this gives us an opportunity to um, share um, experiences and support one another, like conveyor belts, uh, what we can do as a university are going to take over. And what you do be best, we benefit from, and vice versa. So with that, I would like to wish you well for the rest of the day. Before I go and sit down, can I tell my younger kids, my great kids, this? You know, the whole country, and you can check it out, you can ask. Um, on Friday, we had the Department of uh, Forestry, Fisheries, and Environment here, uh, key big people, and you know what they were saying about the University of Venda? They were saying that we are aware as a country that the University of Venda produce the best. They are there in almost all the departments that studied geography and environmental sciences. So can you clap yourself hands because you are doing geography and environmental sciences? Can you make sure that you make the best out of it? Because the opportunities are huge. If you want, of course. At even though you would already logic I did. If you want to go to Cape Town, where do you go? N1? South. I think it's the geographers. Then go to Bambanga South, Nano, Namen. If you want to go to Cape Town, huh? Ariam, Cape Town? Musina? N1 now. So, I'm going to go to Musina and South. Tell me. We are going to go to the toilet and the mini 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 your opportunities, these are your best years. Thank you. of the Executive Mayor of Embed District Municipality to be held annually. Reason being that or the main purpose for this event is an educational support. You know Embed District has got so many departments. We have got technical services that deals with water and other departments. But from the department which is called Economic Development and Planning, where the GIS unit is sitting, we decided to say no, we need to support our beloved schools which are within them, but more especially the schools which are doing geography. So we want to support you on that item which is called GIS. 
but my, my, my fellow educators, I'm a bit worried because uh, I only see, let me not talk to the educators, one brain, I only see eight marks, eight marks, paper one, eight marks, paper two for GIS. So we want to go to the Renelli Self and the non iterative program and the Koshima 16 marks in Amwa. And go send your message in Kavan one way. But above all, if you look at the theme, we want you learners to understand that the geography that you are doing can take you to another level through GIS. Technology. It's here, it's around us. That is why we had Dr. Murulana saying it. So that is the main purpose. We only have two educational support items at Wembe District Municipality. One is in the form of GS Week, the other one is in the form of bursaries. That is how the district is supporting you. I guess you now understand. Maybe let me also touch the item that whatever it is that you are being taught at school, in relation to GIS, we are also going to touch there. You will see when the items that are coming, they will be touching those items. So a wise child must add value to what he or she has for now. Let's move now to the message of support. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. They, they were not anybody. I don't think I will pay you, DJ. A bit of a song when we get the message of support from Department of Education from the East. They will be coming to the front. Right, other than that, what I want to say, it's a matter of saying we are very happy for your coming. And I want to say this, I regard you as the chosen. There are so many learners who would have liked to come here today. But today we have chosen learners from 12 schools. 
Another trial school will be coming tomorrow. So feel very lucky to come here. I'm talking here representing both the Department of Education and the University because I am a former student of this university who studied geography here from 1983 to 1987. From 1983 to 1987, I was a student of geography here. I don't know in which country you were staying during those years. <laughs> so as a department, we are very happy. The program director has already indicated why we are here. And what I can say is that we are very happy as a department to, in our, together with our partners, the Vembe District Municipality, the University of Venda, and other stakeholders who have always been here during this program, which happens every April uh, 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 during the course of the year. Why are we here? I won't tell you why you are here. We're going to hear a lot from other people because I remember last year, I nearly took words from other presenters because I am a geography educator. At the current moment, I am a geography subject advisor. And all the tests you write, you don't write them before I see them. So you are, talking, you are, you are listening to your exam. So why are you here? You are going to learn a lot of things. The program director has indicated the importance of GIS. You are also going to realize some career opportunities related to the study of geography. What is important for you today if there are things you don't understand, don't be shy to ask questions. You were brought here so that you have a better understanding of geography. Because geography, to simplify, as there are types of geography. We have human geography, which you study in grade 10, population geography, grade 11, development geography, grade 12, settlement geography. And you also study physical geography, climate and weather, and geophology. You also study metas environmental. And you also study general geographic techniques, which you usually say it's map work and cartography. So we also like to thank your educators, because if I should tell the truth, there are some schools which only knew about this trip yesterday. We had to push because of uh, some technical difference in our, difficulties in our department. So I'm just here to support you, and I will insist again. Ask questions where you don't understand. When you live here, you must be a better student that way, than when you came in. There must be a change in your knowledge of geography. I'll end by finally saying, one day we want to see you here. As a department will be very happy because like some one speaker said earlier on there are a lot of people in south africa who came from this university as an example your minister of justice ronald lamula was a student here so you can see that a lot of prominent people come from this university so learn as much as possible will be very happy finally behave we don't want to hear any stories that hey, some have been, we have to call the police. No, don't do that. Otherwise, as geographers, we know that we are the only subject where we don't buy apparatus. Then our, the world is our laboratory. Geography is a practical subject. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day.
don't remind us, hey, Good Friday was somewhere there. Don't remind us, hey. And living for each other. Remind. Kutsundoka. Hey. Yeah. Uh, all the presenters or all the people who will be facilitating this program, all the items below, I'm giving you this instruction and you must take it seriously. Let's go and make sure that we, we, we balance the language. All right? Because I, my beloved, uh, Shangan Lenas, I've got my beloved Benda Lenas, I've got, uh, I can see the Indians here. So you must speak all those languages to do what you do with these Lenas. Ne? All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there is one office that if I don't mention it, I, will, I won't be doing justice because this office is, is above all our our father and mother at all. Are you aware that office of the Premier is here? You are not aware, eh? Ms. Deng, office of the Premier, can you rise and wave to the, these people? So that when you go back, you tell uh, Mama Kavad, you want to tell him that I remember it's rocking. That is why Naka result is, what Capricorn reaches here, what are we saying? It's because of this program. Right. Career opportunities. If you check at the program, it's written uh, Department of What, 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 Data Prevention. But this is what I'm going to tell you as the program director. After this item, when we go out for different uh, exhibitions, you will get a lot about the career opportunities you geographers, that when you are doing this geography, what is that that you can do after metric or grade 12? But above all, from the district, as I've already mentioned when I gave you the papers, if you pass grade 12, the main district municipality has got a bursary. This bursary is strictly for the main district residents. And I'm happy because all the fields that you will see when you go to the respective exhibitions, they cover you as geography learners. So I will advise that when we go out here, educators, let's communicate, then we give you the, 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 the documents or the procedure as to how are you, how can you do it to assist your learners. We want these learners to use to utilize those bazaars. And they are very good because they cover everything for you. Accommodation, tuition, books. Uh, I forgot to ask you in a pocket money in a party. Something like that. So you will get the rest of career opportunities in those fields. Now, we are coming to item number six. This is where I said we will split. If you look at 6.1, basics of GIS in the classroom, 6.2, introduction to remote sensing. Those are the two main items that will be rendered here, where we are sitting now. Which means, when you rotate, those who will start, when the time comes, they will go out, then the other ones will come in. Then we, we want to do these things concurrently. But I got the message that if you look at six number 6.4, I got the message that some of the stakeholders have not yet arrived. Let's have a look at 6.4. 6 we do have OTP, which is Office of the Premier. Coxta will join us tomorrow. We have Univen, uh, spelling Chai Univen, education is I, I, 
Can you look at the spelling universe? Universe. It's something else. SG stands for Surveyor General, Limpopo, States SA, uh, Rural Development, and Local Municipalities. This is how we, we, we organized it. All the local municipalities, we also have Ezra South Africa, which is not written there. We have got what we call a GIS lab. Can I see one Asha who will take my learners to that area? But to raise up your hand. That is where some of the learners will go there. Again, Univen. That big man was here called Farai. Did you see Farai? I want you to see Farai was story. This one is a university one. The one who was sitting here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> this guy has prepared a lot of things for us outside. Farai, do you have a drone today? Yes. Huh? Yes, we have. You, there is a drone. Banana, today you are going to operate the drone. And you see it, you send it somewhere to go and capture data and collect data and come back, you see the data that you have collected. Can you see how lucky are you today? Yes. When the teacher says, what is data capturing? And you memorize but not knowing how to capture it today, you will, you will capture it. You were supposed to clap hands for that because you are very good. <laughs> Mr. Mudau, I guess by now you know as to which lines are going to be taken out. We are not going to use the names of the schools here. We will just take line by line to go out. Come closer. I just want to see where are you going to start the line so that I can talk to the ones who are remaining. The ones who are going to stay here, please, like I said, I don't think you are here to copy notes, all right? You only copy notes during studies. Here you just listen and take whatever which is important. Do you want the mic? Do you want me? <laughs> okay. Right. Can you speak that in English? <laughs> Hi. Uh, there are two lines at the back. You guys are going outside. That's where you're going to be seeing and operating the drone. And the second two lines, we are going to the GIS lab. Thank you. I, I suggest that you usher them to those respective places. All right. GIS lab. Then the two guys are leading them to the cover. Okay. Can we, can we quickly do that? Can we quickly do that? Are you ready? Can we quickly do that? Okay. I'm going now. I will see you later. Asha, this is the Robin Mike. Good morning. Good morning, class. Class of 2023, how are you this morning? Uh, 
Kerjakan marwah yang cibi zera pada Alleluia. Okay, it's an attribute. My name is Mr. Mdau. AA. I'm from Bembe District Municipality. Planning Department under the GIS unit. As you know that GIS is still young in our country. How do you know it is it? It was for whites only. So I'm here to encourage you that you can take GIS as an important role in your life. If I can give a person this bottle of water, what does it mean? It means I'm giving you this water for a day, isn't it? But if I teach you how to fetch water, it is a lifetime award, isn't it? In other way, or in other ways, I'm saying, if I give you a direction today or a distance today, I'm giving you for that specific time. But if I teach you how to interpret a map, it is a lifetime. My learners of 2023. GIS is an, an, is an acronym. Stand for Global Positioning System. Two of us. Uh, remember, we are not in church. We are not in congregation. What you do, you raise your hand as your educators or your teachers put you. You tell me your attributes. As you remember, I said I'm Mr. Mdaue from Bebe District Municipality. So we are going to do the same. As your attributes. Anyone want to try? GIS is an acronym stand for Global Protein System. You raise your hands. Ge Geographical Information Systems. Geographical? My ushers will assist me to mark my paper. It's time for geographical information system. Because she's the first person to answer my question, I got a gift. A big one. Class, can you clap hands for him? Where do you come from? You 
this, this, this. So did she, did he get you the attributes? No. Can you repeat? I want to know the school you are coming from. And your name. And your teacher's name. <laughs> My name is Orivo. My name is Orivo. Uh, my son's name is Silikane. I come from Pandeli Secondary School. Uh, my teacher is Mrs. Fumbi. In Pandeli Secondary School, I hope. <laughs> the school is from what? Chifudi. Chau. Chifudi, right? Okay. I know all these schools. Because I am a, I'm a teacher also, I'm an educator. Uh, colleagues, let's go back to, to our presentation. My presentation menu are as follows. Today I'm going to teach you about the what. When I talk about the what, I'm talking about the definition of GIS. Can anyone define what GIS is? GIS is an acronym stand for Geographic Information System, which is a computer-based system or program or tool to query, to analyze, to manipulate, to edit, to transform a lot for the purpose of enhancing decision making. The way the way here we are talking about the location. Where is this university of Venda from Trombola Gore Secondary School? So today I'm going to teach you how to determine the relative locations of stations or points. The why? Why do we have to use this tool? As a municipality, we've got a lot of or different units or, or sections. We have got the technical services which deals with water as a water authority municipality. You can see that. We have uh, community services which deals with disaster management, risks, or responses. There are. How do we apply GIS? You know. Whatever you do is GIS, isn't it? When you eat, is GIS. When you walk, is GIS. When you read, when you fail a subject, it's GIS. When you pass, it's, it's GIS. Whatever you do, it's GIS. And the GIS is fragile. Do you know? It's a scarce resource. As a background, what is GIS? GIS is a computer-based technology and method for collecting, analyzing, managing, modeling, and presenting geographical, geographic da geographical data to a wide range of users. <laughs> GIS is a computer-based powerful set of tools for collecting, storing, 
retrieving, mapping, analyzing, transforming, and displaying spatial and non-spatial data from geographic world for a particular set of purposes that varies for each discipline. Okay, as a background, when you talk about the GIS, we can't talk about GIS without overlaying. As you can see in my screen, GIS is when you convert reality to a paper. Do you agree with me? From my slide, here, yeah. you can see this is a ground, this is the reality, isn't it? For an example, as a municipality, when we are constructing a, a mall, we just come along here when we are moving. We are not fixing a mall. We are not fixing a ground. We are not doing that. We are moving. We are not going to be overlay. What is another name of overlay in GIS? And then, um, it's called data layering. Data layering is correct. It's like <laughs> I'm very much disappointed. Can you give him a mic? I'm so sorry. Um, my name is Nemorma Ifi from the Chan Community. Hey. My name is Nema Uruma Ifi. From the top of Mizimi Hard. I'm going to watch you know what you're doing. Where are you? Come back to us. I'm going to watch you know what you're doing. I'm going to watch you know what you're doing. Data layering, another name of over layering is data layering. So, for example, if you are constructing a mall, we have a reality whereby, as a GIS person, before we construct a mall, we have to take a decision. We have to look for the soil, whether is it uh, capable for that particular de development you are going to do. The statistics around the population. Uh, and also, uh, you look for for the earthworks. If you can check them, we have got the reality at the bottom, which I've already explained. So there are some streets here we are overlaying. Overlaying is when you put layers on top of each other. So as a mall, which means we have to put uh, the earthwork here, the streets. The building and also after the clients who will be buying there is part of our GIS process. GIS is an acronym stand for Geographic Information System. Where I G stand for geographical expression, I for information decision. As you know that we anything for GIS, we do it for having a proper decision making. We are advisors. 
and the earth is a system. I'm happy today because you will see all these things. You are not going to do it theoretically. As in South Africa, they are the ones who are developing all these softwares for GI. So they are, they are at the lab there. They will show you. I won't talk much about the system. The goal. Our goal is to develop and implement this program for member district municipalities, educators, and learners to utilize the remotely sensed data, GIS and GPS, as an effective teaching and learning tools. That's where we are here. Why do we have to use GIS? GIS can help learners at any age to think critically, learn in an integrated manner, or minds and exercise multiple intelligence. As a GIS personnel, you have to think critically. We use computer programs that helps to answer questions. For example, if you can go to a gadget, I know you have got the Android phone, wherever you are, or the smartphone. Immediately when you put David Muchinyari, in your phone, it will take you there without being going there. If you want to check, uh, maybe to investigate something or you want to write a, a, a research about Devon, or Osha, you can able to do it. It assists us on responding to queries. It can also solve planning and manage problems. I told you in my introduction that I'm from the planning units. We are planners. We are special planners. If we are doing the demarcation of sites, I've already told you that before you demarcate the site, I said that my goal is that you are doing my Allah is under our charity. We have to look at the factors. Like the population which is coming there, but don't fit on basic services, electricity, water. We have to know the population of people who are coming there. As well, the Apalonera Shinisaka planning. If there is a pipeline, we have to check the kiloliters, the liters, which a day, Mutundova Kokonzu, are so good that a pipeline. That's why you can see, or you can see we have a shortage of water. Why? Because when we demarcate, we stand up to demarcate as a mushroom, 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 as a uh, what's the problem? supply, 
<coughs> what can we do with the two? It enhances the decision making process, I've already told you. GIS helps in solving problems and answer queries, already told you. Used for planning purposes and manage spatial land. It helps to minimize possible environmental impacts and monitor climate changes. Renewable GIS, and it is a way when you give a room of afraid, you can't want to achieve your Abula Musitana or no pain in your own lower tornado. A virtuous deal, or you didn't run it out yet, sorry. A who got afraid, you got in Ghana, got in Ghana. A general journey to do for environmental. We, we, we manage the climate, monitor climate changes. Then, and also if I can give you an example for environmental. We now have to the one in one, yes, one. I'm going to in one, or when I found the chair, I'm going to go There are a lot of trees, which you can see, they are right away at the road. Especially the baobab trees. Have you ever noticed? Why? They are indigenous. See, the people who are living in the world are living I don't know. This one And also, we can he, he apply GIS to create to create maps. To create maps. The functions of GIS. We can capture that. Do you know how to capture data? They are going to show you at the laboratory. The input of data information through different methods of gathering. When you talk about the method of gathering, we can use the GPS, we can use the phones. As well as we just reach a computer. Data storage. This is a database management system. Data in one angle, one angle, if I you, your story one way bit. Immediately when you go in your gadget or your phone, una database management. If it's water, you will get the the database management at water first. If it's electricity, you will get it at ESCO. And also like a data, the other way is never harmed. Data manipulation. The data can be edited and amended. You can be able to manipulate data. Landa ID number B is able to answer this one. Mara madzina ni na kono achicha. You can manage to manipulate data. Query and analysis. It can be used widely in decision making processes. I've already done with it. Data security, the data can sometimes be sensitive. Una data in a C1. As one data data at our best as you know, in a C1 and B2. Renewal Zumba Zajino Uchkerazi to the Chi unfold. What you are caught, you will have to till proven guilty. But what you are saying, you will never show me an agent. So that is all Zumba the data. Or what data is not sensitive. Data, data standardization. Data in when I went to a standard. We have the norms and standards. That it, depending on the department or depending on the insensitivity. It increases the need to share data between organizations and also minimize the duplications. Thus, I was saying, if I need water data, you will get it from water first. 
That's only. Only just to avoid duplications. Visualization, the map in the the ability to display data, maps, and information. Who can tell me the difference between orthophoto map and topographical map? Permanent, The topographical map is five times larger than the orthophoto map, and the orthophoto the map is five times smaller than the topographical map. Ambazone. Eh? Murone, Murone, Zagiwa. Ozumuzato. Ambazone. Ambazone. My, my, can you assist? Can you assist? What about two seconds? Oh, Vana, Vana, P. Yes. The topographical map is five times smaller than the topographical map. And the autophoto map is five times larger than the topographical map. And the topographical map was elected from the autophoto map. This one. 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 Educators, can you assist? Good morning, everybody. 
My name is Makam A.K. from Albany Secondary School. So I just want to add on the difference between a, the orthophoto map and the topographic map. When we talk about the orthophoto map, we are talking about the map that shows unclear pictures. So when we talk about uh, the, 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 the topographic map, it's the map that shows uh, clear pictures. So in as far as uh, as uh, the scale is concerned, the scale of the orthophoto map is always 1 is to 10,000, which when we convert it is 0 0,1. So when we talk about the orthophoto uh, topographic map, the scale is 1 is to 50,000. When we convert it, it, it becomes 0 0,5. Thank you very much. Understood? No one on party? Okay. Okay, let's move. Time is no longer with us. The GIS components. Uh, we are having a hardware. When we talk about the hardware, it's the computer system, such as uh, scanners, digitizers, printers, and plotters, on which the software operates. We can't have a GIS without a hardware. Hardware is this thing. Hardware. Hardware. Laptop is a hardware. We put the system there, we talk with the system on a hardware. Software. GIS software includes the tools used to store, analyze, and display geographic information. This, you will get it from the left there. They will show you in detail. But at the current status, all the departments or all the municipalities, they are using S3 GIS software. All. Aunaimo software. Nanda Musi. Ramobako Jums as the Red GC. Ridipenda Kauri. Which discipline? In a survey, you can, they are using the model makers, the care, the whatsoever. But in GIS, we use S3. You will, you will see them. They are down there. After this session, you are going there. Data. This is the most fundamental part or fundamental components of GIS. When we talk about your the data is the data which describes you. Bingazo tabu best of a one gay Tanzania. Gori identity ya wo yaba isa yera ni nazne abasho on eni mune ni hila zitu ni GIS ya rekwete zitu. People, when you talk about the people who are the users of the system, it is a tool that allows users to make maps for visualization purposes. We are users. Rene didn't use us. One of our updates the navigation is available, the mapping is available. It's not a phone. New one, no 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 Applications, this is your mind. Just should be designed with the potential applications in mind. Whatever you think. KGIS. Developed to some of your applications. Data types. We've got only two data types. Spatial data and the attribute data. Spatial data, this refers to information linked to specific location using coordinates. Do you know the coordinates? One thing I have also, X, Y, Z. Those who are doing mathematics, when we the Cartesian plane, in analytical geometry. As one. The logic coordinates. When they say simplify or determine the turning point. The is it. Even like a trigonometry, where is the audience? As one. 
all students take coffee. The Jesus transcode means Mara in GIS, we are dealing with X and Y, or X, Y, and Z. In Z, the Azimuth. Rwanda na vertical na horizontal and they represent by applying spatial objects points, lines and polygons okay who can tell me a spatial object as a line Okay. A special object as a line is a road. A road is a line. A dam or a ground. Living. It's a polygon. A point. An example of a point? You are self, you are a point, isn't it? Wherever you are seated, you are a point. Under special data structures, we've got two also. Data. We've got the vector data. When we talk about the vector data, we're talking about the features as point lines and polygon. It represents the natural features. Good representation of data and more closely resemble the real world. For an example, when you say a rod is a day, a dam may be represented as a polygon, as cool as a point. What's the advantage of a vector? Maybe? The advantage of using vector data is that more information to be stored in a map and there's more space for more information to be displayed in the map. Zone. Zone. Vector is simple. The analysis is simple. If it's a road, it's a road. Zone. And also the accuracy. All the roads and the pipelines around, we have mapped them. And uh, if you need the coordinates, you can go straight there. I don't want to go to the Kachikor or Church of Chineva with Pakacho. Immediately, can I never university? Immediately, when you put University of Venda, it will take you straight direct to the University of Venda, isn't it? The Evlard, Zonopi Vector. Accuracy. Good representation of data, you can be able to see. Or this is a road. On a topographical photo, you can be able to see, or this is a road, maybe by, by colors, by symbologies, isn't it? Rasta. It is represented by the stored by grid cells or pixels. Your photo is a rasta. Can you able to, to manipulate your photo? You can't. Immediately when you start to manipulate it, out of resolution, isn't it? Each cell contains data, good and representation this data. Advantage, analysis, simple and cheap. It is a cheap technology because you just take a photo. As on it. Non-spatial data, which is an attribute. This refers to a description, quality, and characteristics of data. For example, from my introduction, I told you that I'm a Stamgao AA from Bebe District Municipality under GIS unit. That was my attribute. Your ID number. It describes yourself, isn't it? But the way I can buy a family, you will go over. Pastor, 
Hii anagambo dhorifu six digits zaidi na mbadi ya mbadi. It can tell us about our surroundings portrayed in a real image and it gives us information without necessarily going to it. For example, we, I think this we have already done. This is an example of a topographical photo. You know it. As one has one is not that well true. You can see a road there. You can see a blue lines which represents the is it the rivers? 
and also the demarcations there. You can see the demarcations. This is the road, this is the road. So the spatial objects. This is a satellite, we call it a spot image, but not necessary. This is an orthophoto map. Aronen. Aerial map, uh, I think it's, it's no longer in, in our curriculum. The aerial. However, we don't call it a reward. Now, <coughs> GPS. It's an acronym, stand for, who can tell me? Don't forget that the gift is a gachani. Hey, GPS, stand for? Global Positioning System. Correct. It is a satellite-based navigation system made up of a network of satellites. It operates in any weather condition, any way in the world. Yes, we now must not want to give us your parent. This you are going to operate outside there, they will show you. All the equipment. There's no show inside. It's never GPS. It's either uh, the land survey, GPS, uh, the portable G GPS for GIS, you will know. They will show you. After this session, they will be teaching you about how to operate it and how does it do. And then, the GPS types, don't dwell much cut. Hey, Nazo Chishuma mean Nika GIS. Rishim is a change. I don't go to your camera around here. There are beds, but it's a change. I don't know, man. There are real camera. I need a real angle. My husband did you do to my own lesson. Saturday. The change. No, to a request to you and a moose. In my conclusion, this presentation seeks to address the need for using GIS and special information in our district and local municipalities. More accessible and understandable to the user. No matter how difficult the GS journey is, it always begins with first step. So this would serve as first step on a rewarding of looking at our reality through papers. Uh, program director, I thank you. Valerie Jandoy. Okay. I forgot to introduce my sister here as uh, program director. Is unavailable in this room. Uh, we have got two sessions here. We have got two sessions. Okay, thank you, the presenter. We need to give a big hand up of applause. Um, the next presentation is going to be on remote sensing, satellite remote sensing. I'm the presenter, FM Mulumbeni, my colleague, who also assisted in preparing this presentation is Mr. Dondofema. You already know him, you saw him, you are going to see him outside as he's going to demonstrate more on the data collection using the drone, 
using GPS and many other methods, you are going to see him outside. He's waiting for you after this uh, presentation. So, uh, interesting, we have had, if we have learned a lot about GP, uh, GIS, GIS, GIS. GIS and remote sensing, I can say they go hand in hand because the data that we acquire through remote sensing, we process it using GIS tools. We collect our, our remote sensing data from satellites. It needs to be processed. How? Using some GIS and also some uh, remote sensing too. Maybe let's start by the definition itself. What is remote sensing? What do you understand by remote sensing? Ashas, please. Can you give someone a mark? Remember, you were told to tell us your ID. We need to know your ID. We need to know where you are located, where you are coming from. Who are you? <laughs> okay, although we are struggling to hear you, so you can go back to your answer. What did you say remote sensing is? He says that there are any information about your visitor without a physical contact. Thank you. We, can need, we need to clap hands for her. The most important thing is without the instrument or the gadget being used, being in contact of the object being recorded. That's important. Um, there it is. The definition of remote sensing being the acquisition of information about an object without being in physical contact with the object. For instance, we want to map the whole of this university. We can map it using this drone. We can fly the drone right around the university campus and it will be taking pictures, images of the university and then we can later on uh, record that information or interpret the different kinds of buildings or features that we find in the university. I think there's also remote sensing as having the ability to measure the properties of an object. It's the same thing. So if you decide to define it using this number one, it's fine, you can score all the marks. You can alternatively even define it using this number two, where you simply say it's the ability to measure the properties of an object without touching it. Maybe someone is uh, eager to ask me what if I use my own phone. Isn't we have phones with cameras? You take a picture. You don't touch the, the, the object that you are photographing or you are taking a picture from. So maybe the question is that also remote sensing? Hmm? I need to hear from you. Is that also remote sensing? Some are just shaking their hands there saying no, it's not remote sensing. Because remote sensing, they are understand it as when we use sensors in the in space, area of photography, still we fly it, it is in the atmosphere, in space, somewhere. So our own photos, mm, mm -mm, we cannot use them for, we, of course it's part of, but we cannot use it as part of the remote sensing data that we use. So we see that's the picture of the globe. And what we see there, this is a satellite. We have so many of these satellites in space. There are so many. And they are there to capture different 
objects on the Earth's surface. They have also, they are also there, uh, capturing at different scales, different resolutions. I'll go deeper as we go through the slide. So, and these satellites also kept as they capture information around the globe. They do so in what I can say in different times. Some repeat capturing images of this university, for instance, after every 16 days, you see this sensor capturing the University of Venda. Some do so repeatedly after 24 hours, depending with the kind of sensor that, uh, is, that you might need to use or that is in space. And these sensors also, some of them, they vary per country. Do we, from South Africa, have we launched any satellite sensor in space? Those who like reading and listening to you, do we have? We are not sure, isn't it? I know from you geographers, you are going in future. You are mathematicians also, isn't it? Some of you do mathematics, isn't it? Some of you do also do physics, isn't it? Yes, think about it in future as your career to see how can we also launch our own satellite. This is for IR. Look at our theme. So it starts now. You do it now. You learn it now. So be eager to find out whether we also have these satellites or how as South Africa we can launch our own satellite rather than relying on other countries launching their satellites in space and they're like spying on us. Isn't it? We also need to spy on them. You see, like I said, there are so many satellite sensors that we have in space. So many. You see, all of these different kinds. Each is sent for a different mission. Some are sent in space for collecting vegetation data and changes. Some are there just to collect maybe uh, soil information, some about water information, some even a combination. So for remote sensing, we, when we need to collect data about, for instance, I'll keep repeating about where we are. We want information about this university. We see it has got different buildings, different structures. So what we do, what happens with remote sensing when it is in space is, number one, we see this source of energy for remote sensing satellites. They use sunlight, the light out there. And what happens is the light provides with the source of energy or what we call illumination. And this energy goes down to the Earth's surface. As it goes down to the Earth's surface, not all of the energy hits the ground. This is the surface, the ground. You can see the buildings already. That's the Earth's surface. So we talk of it as energy from the sun being radiated to the Earth's surface through the atmosphere. As it reaches the ground there, what happens is there's interaction. A lot of things are happening. Some of the energy is trapped before it reaches the Earth's surface because of the dust in the atmosphere, because of uh, maybe mist, rainfall. Not all of it reaches the... Oh, my goodness. What happened? Okay. I was on the interaction of the target. The at sea reaches the Earth's surface. It records the information of the target. This is the satellite sensor that we are seeing there at uh, D. That's the satellite sensor. So it's recording the information on the ground, whether it's about the buildings here, whether it's about the tarred road surfaces here, whether it's about even the um, 
vegetation, the lawn, the car park, it's recording. And after recording, at E there, it sends the signal. Where does it send it to? To the transmission. Someone is working in the transmission room, receiving, checking if everything is well, so that at the reception, and that information is sent to F. At F, what is happening? We are interpreting and analyzing what is it that has been taken by these satellites. Remember, we have different buildings here, different roof types. So we need now to interpret, and this interpretation, we also use what we call um, knowledge of the area. It's very important. I'm familiar with the University of Venda. Even if I see on the image to say, the, the, I can tell you that this is a car park still is, is, and this is a building because I have been here. Even if it is reflected in different colors, but I will be able to tell. So what helps us in remote sensing mostly is understanding, knowing the area that you are doing or you are capturing the information from. You don't just um, do guesswork. So we, what we normally do is, if you are not familiar with the area, you go to the field, you visit investors vendor, you go around familiarize yourself. Are we together? Yeah, remote sensing is a little bit different from GIS. I see GIS as a little bit simpler. Very simple, but with remote sensing, you need just to understand the techniques and how it works. So far, that's how we collect the data and how we make use of the sunlight as the source of energy. Boom, the earth surface collect information, the sensor sends the information to the transmission room, and then, yes, there's a question, there's a hand up. Can we give him a mic? Um, so, what I'm not understanding is, um, the remote sensing or the recorder of wonder. Um, so that was where we will be able to see where we are done in your party. That it use regulation, I mean, it's sensing or something. You want, okay, can you repeat your question again? Because the energy starts with the sun. Yes. So now I'm thinking of the, the radiation to the sun. Yeah. So what I'm understanding, the question is what? Does um, remote sensing look for um, heat? Like it, it, what, how it works, it is used to the reflection patterns. What I mean by reflection is soil reflects differently on the satellites. It reflects differently. Rooftops of buildings, they reflect differently. So it is a matter of reflectors. Anyway, maybe there are more slides coming. And then keep your question if it is not answered in the slides that are coming. Yes. Like, uh, let's just say on Saturday, eh? yeah. uh, it was just cloudy. Yeah, so mm. hope it happened because <laughs> the floor is so. Okay, all right. Anyway, I did not want to go further about, because we have some sensors that are passive, that do not rely on the sunlight to capture uh, the Earth's surface. We also have, we call them passive sensors, and but we are not going to go deeper into that. In any case, your clouds do not stop the... the what is happen is we have, when we are processing the images, issues of cloud cover. So mostly when we are capturing, when we are capturing the remote sensing data, if we are using our own drone, we can determine when to collect the image. Mostly before 12 midday. And during the clear days. Because if we could capture the image and there is cloud, it will be blurred image. It won't be clear. 
most of whatever we want to see on the surface, it will be cloud cover. So processing that or cleaning that image, uh, most of the images are not even usable. This is, those are some of the challenges that we have when we are processing our remote sensing data. Thank you for asking that question. But however, satellites will continue, continuously take their image. They don't stop because it's, it's the cloud cover. But however, it is up to us now, are we going to use that satellite image? Thank you very much. There was another hand. You, you are covered. Okay, so we can continue. So the G, what is the G saying there? Sorry. Thank you. Okay. The G is basically talking of the application. Now you can create those so-called GIS layers that they were talking about. Remember I said we have a car park within the investor vendor. We have an admin building. We have a card label like this one, you can now label those features di differently and give them the names. That's the application. You can choose what you want with that data. And you can create the layers, and we can only create the layers now in GIS through the interpretation of what we have. Okay? Yes, another question? Um, are you my timekeeper? Because if it's 10 to 12, please let me know. Let me know by quarter to so that I can conclude. You can go ahead. Yes, on C, interaction with the target. It simply means that there's reflection, right? Yeah. There's reflection. Yes. So why if there is less re uh, reflection on the ground and some of the heat is not through the atmosphere? Uh -huh. The remote sensing be able to work the same. Okay, now what happens? It depends on the sensor. There are some sensors, the flies are coming, that have a very, what we call, high resolution. They can uh, measure this energy up to, what I can say, five meters. Five meters from the ground. So you can imagine. We have some sensors that can measure the same object, but they measure it up to 30 meters from the ground. You see the difference already. 30 meters from the ground, the image might not be good enough or clear, but it's usable, usable. It's depending on what you want to use it for. So this is a, a natural, what I should I say, it's, it's natural that some of the energy is lost along the way. Not all the energy reaches, reaches the Earth's surface. No, that's nature. But we still use the, the remote sensing uh, outputs that we get. Good. I like students who ask questions and interact. It makes it very interesting. So, image acquisition, I think. I think I have talked about this. You transfer the image, you transfer the picture. I, the previous diagram was showing about the, how we process it. So mostly this one is fine, showing the globe, showing the satellite image sensors and how they capture. Let me go on to radiation. This visible light, our eyes can, are only able to see within this visible length, between 400 and 700 nanometers. That's how we are able to see. And this, what we call electromagnetic spectrum, is what we use to measure or to, to see our, our remote sensing images either in color, RGB, we are going to see it in the next slide where we say red, green, and blue. We combine the three, what you see is either a white light or you can remove the blue, you can get a combination. It's another, it's, we, what I can say is, it's another course that you can do about understanding the color combination itself. 
in future you can end up maybe doing it if you specialize in uh, GIS and remote sensing. You will learn about more about these color combinations and how we end up getting a black color, how we end up getting a blue, how we end up getting a red. What do we combine? So these are the resolutions that I tried to explain to the question from one of the learners who said, how come sometimes is, is every remote sensing imagery that we get usable? I said, it depends with the purpose. If you are in water, suppose you are a water manager, you want to manage pollution in dams, there is a certain type of remote sensing data that you would need, a certain type of sensor that you would need. And they have different, if you hear of spatial, let, us, let me tell you, the moment you see the word spatial, think of space. Don't complicate it. Are we together? Spatial, think of space. How is it distributed in space? If you hear of temporal resolution, don't complicate it. Temporal is time. In other words, we are simply saying, how often, how often does a specific sensor record information of a specific point in time? Maybe after 16 days, maybe after 30 days, maybe after three months. So you need to know now to say, okay, if this temporal resolution, if this sensor that I am picking to use only is available after every three months, is it usable, usable for uh, issues like disaster management where we are having flooding? Sometimes no. Why? Because floods can happen today and next week and maybe next month. But if we have a sensor that is there in 16 days or in 24 hours, we can be able to have that information as we need it like yesterday. There is no way we can say we have flooding disaster today and then we wait to see that information in the three months to come. It will be like absolute or we don't need it. We need to act now. So the issue of temporal also is quite important. Spectral, yeah, it's coming I'll, in detail and radiometric, those two also, but um, it's okay, I will explain them, but don't worry, don't go deeper into them. I'll, it's okay, I will explain you what they mean in the next slide. So with spatial resolution, I told you it's space, how much space, like for instance, one sensor can cover on the ground it's a 30 meters by 30 meters, the information that it captures. 30 meters by 30 meters. And normally that's what you see. It has got a special resolution of 30 meters. And the detail of such a sensor is good for some purposes. Like, for instance, if you want to map changes on vegetation, like this university, we know before these buildings were there, it was a forest. And now we want to see how they cleared this forest. And we can measure using such a sensor, it's fine, it's that scale, a 30 meter resolution. And it specifies the issue of pixel size. We have some uh, sensors that are at low cost, with a special resolution, I talked about it, 30 meter, even up to 1,000 meters. We have some which are at very fine scale, 0 0.41 to 4 meter resolution, like a spot image. If it's taken about the investor of vendor, you can tell that this is admin. It can even write to say admin, depending on the orientation. It's 4 meters, it's so accurate. But these sensors, of course, those that are very accurate, they, are all, they come with a cost. They are not freely available. If ever you see them freely available on the market, it means maybe they are too old or 10 years back, so they're just there in the archive. 
so they can give him out for for free. Someone, my timekeeper, I see new students coming in. Remember to tell me my time. Okay. So, sorry. So this is about spatial resolution. See how we capture, this is a pixel. This is another pixel, one, okay. These are two, four pixels. This one, one, two, three, four. However, the fish are being captured here. It's the same feature. This is why the, these two pixels are combined. And this feature here is some other different feature. It could be a road, it could be a building, we don't know. But we also have this other feature. So this is how in remote sensing you start seeing the pixels being used to capture uh, the different app surface features. But remember I said you need to be familiar with the area so that you are able to tell. It could be this is a rod and this is also a rod. Why do you think it could be that? Why on this pixel, the source is a modis imagery at 500 meter resolution stuff, but why, why do you think this, I said this can be a rod and also this can be a rod, but they are presented in different colors, color pixels. Why would you think that could be the reason? Anyone? Think in any educators who is interested in attempting? Okay, let me tell you. The reason could be, I'm not saying this is a rod. Get me right. Are we together? We have a verified this information on the ground. Are we together? Yes. But this can be a rod and this can be a the reason being that Roads are, have got different surfaces. Are we together? So the way a tad or a concrete surface rod, a tad, black tad rod, appear on the image is different from the way a gravel rod appear on the image. But they are all roads, isn't it? So it is now your duty after in, during interpretation to say, this is a rod, this is a rod, and you go on to your attribute table and further define why this road and that road, and you add that information. Uh, in GIS, you've been told how to capture the attribute information. So similarly, it can happen also with buildings. We can have, this can be a building at investor vendor, a building at investor vendor, a building at investor vendor. But because of the different roof types and roof colors, they appear differently. So that is very important. And we say we go for field verification for that reason. So we have also, right, a Landsat, another center, center, Landsat, imagery, a 30 meter resolution, and it's showing us this different pixel. You will have to identify also these pixels the same way I previously interpreted, interpreted. And you see, maybe this is vegetation, Maybe this black thing is water. I'm saying maybe, because we, we don't have a key there for someone who has verified, are we together? But mostly on Landsat 8, I know the black areas are water. It's water mostly. And we have also this one, spot. You see, I remember I told you spot is about four meter resolution. You can tell. It's now almost showing the kinds of buildings. It can even show sometimes the height of some buildings. So this spot is at 1.5 meter spatial resolution, very close, just from the ground, 1.5 meters. And we have some buildings that are taller than 1.5 meters. We also have this number of spectral bays in which a sensor collects or reflects. So we are talking of a spectral resolution. It's not interesting what sensing, isn't it? Uh, just stand up a little bit. I see some others. Stand up a second. Stand up. Lena, stand up. 
Let us stand up. Are we still together? Yes. Hey, are we still together? Are we still enjoying uh, remote sensing? Yes. You are enjoying it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Sit down. So, spectral dissolution, you are looking at the number of. Oh, Okay, let me conclude in the next five minutes. So we are looking at the number of resolution that a spectral band in which a sensor collects or reflected radiance. Remember, we talked of radiation. How much radiation energy is reflected back into the atmosphere? Uh, wow. Okay. Let me, because of time, go. We are saying to have a black and white film is blue plus green plus red. And for a color film, and we are, uh, okay, let me not go into the details. Let me move on. Move on. Time. I've told you already that when we are talking of temporal resolution, we are talking of time. How often the sensor passes or revisits the same area. So, well, different sensors revisit the same area in different times. Some in 4 to 16 days, some 24 hours, some in 16 or more days. I've, I've spoken about this. Um... Temporal resolution, uh, it's time again, details. Radiometric resolution, we're looking at the ability of a sensor to record levels of brightness. The ability of a sensor to record the levels of brightness. That's when you talk of radiometric resolution. And mostly it comes in grayscale range for each band. We also have um, seemingly the same thing, remember, I say it if it's a rod, doesn't mean to say it appears the same on the image. In terms of colors, but we have to interpret it differently. Same thing with soil. We have black soil, we have some soil which is red, they also appear differently on the image. But it's interesting, once you do it, you learn it once, it's repeating. You do it every day, you become an expert. Okay, uh, let me move on to the, what I want now more is the applications of remote sensing because it's very critical for now, for you learners, you need to know why are we talking of these remote sensing images? Why do we need it? We need remote sensing in many aspects of our uh, everyday life. In urban planning, you need to map and update the city. The cities, they use also remote sensing. You, can, you need to understand how the urban sprawl is happening. If there are structures happening around your city, you can map them in real time using remote sensing images. It's very important. Facility management, town planning, in the creation of your GIS database. Remember I said remote sensing is one of the source of that data that you are using in GIS. So you cannot say, I only want to be a GIS expert and then you abandon this other source of your data, which is remote sensing. Uh, the benefits, okay. Okay, let me go on to, okay. Okay, this one is basically showing that in real time, you can be constructing a rod, okay, in, in, it has been captured in remote sensing, and then this is the rod being constructed. In agriculture, it does a lot, remote sensing data. Is the one that we use for crop uh, acreage estimation. We want to know how much in terms of food security. 
my time. Okay. I'm being told my time is up, but we know that more sense we use it in agriculture. We use it in disaster management. We use it in so many other flood damage to standing and many other. Because of time, thank you very much. Then the applications, there are so many, but I've touched some of them. Thank you very much, learners and the educators. So we are ready to welcome the new group. Let me hear how they are going to split you guys into two groups. So it will be from... Mm -hmm. the I think it's the fourth one. Yeah. And then they go and move out there to the foot. From this one. First one is from outside. So it's from this row to the first one. We are going out. You will be very late because you are from the right. Yeah. From this row to the first row.
Good morning, class. Oh, is it morning? Yeah, it's still morning. 57. 11.57. Good morning. What you know about? Nikwati the winner. Nikwati Anga. Okay, it's an introduction. I missed them down. AA. As you can see on the screen, from Bebe District Municipality, under Geographic Information System Unit, as my attributes. Today I'm going to teach you more about Geographic Information System. Before I can say anything, Who can tell me? Uh, the definition of GIS. No one. Eh? Before, before, before you give them the mic. Before you give them the mic, let me say this. Okay, you are welcome, latecomers, you are welcome. I was still introducing myself as an attribute in GIS, and Mr. Mdawi A from Weber District Municipality under the Geographic Information System. So, I'm going to take you through this presentation of GIS. Before I can say anything, let me tell you this. If you can give a person this bottle of water today, what does it mean? It means you give him or her for a day, isn't it? <laughs> but if I can teach you how to fetch water, is it not a lifetime award? In other words, I'm saying, if I can give you distance and direction today, it means I give you the direction to Univent for a day. 
But if I can teach you how to interpret and analyze spatial information, it is your lifetime. As you know that GIS is still scarce. It's a scarce resource. It's fragile. And it's still young in our country. Whatever you do, anyway, is GIS. If you eat, GIS. Azoni. Azoni. If you walk, it's GIS. The way you walk, whether you are modeling or you are staggering, it's GIS. We can analyze you. Now, GIS is an acronym. Stand for? We are not in Uzalo. <laughs> we are not in church, we are not in a congregation. What I prefer as your educator today, you raise your hand, you give me your attributes as I've already told you mine, you tell me your name, your teacher, your geography teacher's name, and the name of the school. Then the answer. A lot of hands, eh? Okay, next question. GIS stands for Global Positioning System. True or false? I'm from Alton Primary School. My educator is Chauke Energy. The answer is false. The answer is false. Plus, is she correct? Yes. If she's correct, I've got, I've got some gifts here. Just give her a gift. She's correct. first uh, uh, person who responded, just give it a gift. Okay, now, my presentation menu are as follows. Today I'm going to tell you the what in GIS, the what. What is the definition of GIS? GIS is an acronym, I can see there are a lot of hands. It's an acronym, stand for Geographic Information System, which is a computer-based planning tool or program, which we analyze, we manipulate, we query, analyze, transform, a lot. You can add, you can subtract, you can, you can do both mass with GIS for the purpose of enhancing decision-making process. The way, today I'm going to teach you how to determine the relative location of points. For an example, for example, Uh, you can ask your computer or your gadgets or your phones, where is the University of Vienna while you have been seated at Sikha what? Sikha what, what secondary school? Sikha Ngoma. Yes, I like that name. Sikha, Sikha Ngoma. Yes, Sikha Ngoma. Yes, you can able to ask your phone that where is Sikha Ngoma secondary school, isn't it? 
you determine your relative locations. The why, why do we have to use this tool? And the how? How do we apply the GIS in your respective places? The background. I've already told you that is the, the, the definition of GIS. Now, as a background, I told you that we can analyze data through GIS. If you can look there, what do you call this process? When you put layers on top of each other, My name is Tobelo Maranelli. I'm from DPP Secondary School. My educator is Ms. Semacheveli. So the answer is data layering. Data layering. And the other name of data layering is overlaying, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know. As a municipality, if we are, we, we are, we are constructing a mall, Madame Lele Cruz, you know what we do as trainers. Before we do anything, we as GIS personnel, we have to go there. We have to look for the population which is around there. The soil, depth, the soil, density, whatsoever, which is around there. All the information, we have to look. And also the environmental impact assessments, EIAs. Whether how many snakes are there, how many frogs, the indigenous trees which are there, you know, I can mention some. So if you can check there, we convert reality to a paper, isn't it? Now, here we have the ground, which is the earth as we are dealing with the earth surface. From there we have the streets, the earthworks. We put the streets on top of the earthwork, on the earth. Here, we have the buildings, the building of the mall. After that, the clients. We have to look how many clients are they going to come after the mall. Economically. SGIS people, we have to do the such projections. The goal is to develop and implement this program for VDM educators and the learners to utilize the remote license data, GIS and GPS as effective teaching and learning purpose or tools. Why do we have to use GIS? It helps learners at any age to think critically, learn in an integrated manner for minds and exercise multiple intelligence. Since the government introduced GIS to your schools, I hope you are thinking critically, isn't it? When I give you a map, you know what's the purpose of the map, isn't it? You have to think critically. Because whatever you do on a daily basis is GIS. Use computer programs that helps to answer questions. I think this I've already explained to you, that you can able to ask your computer or your phone the, to determine their relative locations. You can able to go to Cape Town while you are seated at uh, your respective schools, isn't it? Using the navigation. We can able to solve planning and manage problems. For those who know demarcation of sites, 
when we demarcate the site, there are a lot of factors which we look at. We are no longer using Magosas. Do you know Magosas? Mm -hmm. The traditional leaders and the chains. Initially, they were measuring the stands or the elements using the chains manually. But these days, we are using the GIS to demarcate the, your, your stands. We use this for planning purposes. Because before you give a person a stand, you have to investigate the basic services, the electricity which is coming there. How many people are they going to stay there? What can we do with the two? It enhances the decision making process. GIS helps solving problems and answer queries, you know. We can use it for planning purposes and manage spatial land. I think this I've already taught you. It helps to minimize possible environmental impacts and monitor climate changes. Yes, we can monitor climate. I got last week there, there was this thing of Freddy, Freddy, did you remember? Yeah. yeah. GIS is the one which was doing that. Uh, GIS is also used to create maps and con we can convert a reality world to a paper. The functions of GIS. We can capture that. The input of data information through different method of gathering. You know how to capture that. We can use the computer. We can use the GPS, we can use the navigators, we can use the theodolites, the micro stations, anything to collect that. Even you are full, you can be able to collect that. It depends on the department you are working at. Data storage, a house of data in digital and that could be. You can be able to store that. Your phone, you can use your phone to store that. Your contacts are stored in your phone. We call it data storage. Data manipulation is when you play around with the data. When you edit, when you amend, Query and analysis, you can be able to ask your phone. Where is investor vendor? I think I've already done with that. Data security, some data are very sensitive. For an example, there is another guy who is lingering around these days, Tower Besta. We as GIS people, we have some of the information. Thus, You know that he has been arrested in Tanzania while the intelligence people are here in South Africa. We were, we're using the GIS data. Data standardization. Each and every data has got a standard. You have to standardize them so that you avoid the duplications. And another thing, if you need water first data, you will get it at water first, isn't it? If you need ESCOM data, you will get it at ESCOM. Visualization, the ability to display data, maps and information. Who can differentiate author photo and the topographical photo? The difference between author photo and the 
Topografer. My name is Daniel Masi, and my educator is Mr. Makambe K. I learned at Falcon Secondary School. The difference between autophoto and topographic is that the topographic shows clear pictures, but the autophoto does not show clear pictures. Thank you. Correct. Okay, just for time. The GS components, we have got hardware. Hardware is a computer system, including scanners, digitizers, printers, and plotters, on which software operates. We operate the software. This thing, a computer, is a hardware. Software, GIS software includes the tools used to store, analyze, and display geographical information. Data is the most fundamental part of most fundamental components of GIS because you can't do anything without data. Your ID is very important. You can't be identified without your ID. Data, people, in other ways we say we are users. It's a tool that allows users to make maps for visual agent purposes. We are the operators of the software where the ones who are operating so that the hardware will communicate with the data in the software with other components of GIS. Application, a GIS should be designed with a potential application in mind, is your mind. Data types, we've got two data types, spatial data and attribute data. Under spatial, we've got spatial and non-spatial data. This refers to information to a specific location using coordinates. You know coordinates. Those who are doing mathematics, we've got this thing of which we call it the Cartesian plane, X, Y, under analytical geometry. And they are represented by applying spatial objects such as points, lines, and polygons. Data that show locations, which is mainly in the form of a map. Who can tell me? A spatial object as a light. My name is Agne Mawaza from PTT Secondary School. My educator is Masangu Ivi, and the answer is road. Road is a line, isn't it? And the polygon is a ground or dam, whatsoever. As long as you are doing uh, four to five corners. And uh, a point, Yourself will a point, isn't it? The advantage of vector. Advantage of vector. Under spatial data, we have got two types, which is a vector data and the uh, what do we call it? raster data. When you talk about the vector data, it shows features as point lines and polygon, good representation of data, and now closely resemble the real world. Advantage, it is easy. It is simple to analyze. And it is very accurate because if you say road, is a road. You can see you measure a road from the map. Good representation of data. Rasta, it represents and is stored by grid cells. Your picture is a raster, do you know? Any picture, because you can't be able to manipulate it, but the vector you can manipulate it. And it is stored by grid cells, rows and columns, which we call them pixels. 
Excel. Each cell contains data, good and representative data, the advantage. It is analyzed. It is, its analysis is very simple. And it's non-topological. It is non-continuous because you can't able to manipulate the, your photo. Immediately when you start to manipulate your photo, you take it out of the, of the resolution. And it is cheap technology. Attribute data, as I do the introductions, uh, I told you my attributes, so I don't think I can go back. Your name, your surname, whatsoever. Any data is an attribute data. The functional elements of GIS, data acquisition, I think I've already done this, uh, is a process of identifying and collecting specific information to solve a particular problem. Data manipulation, I was telling you just now, who can tell me what is buffering? Buffering. My name is. My name is. My name is. I'm from Ante. I'm from the Fifty Second School. My name is Mangai Kapeko Bates, and I'm from PPT Secondary School. My teacher is Mr. Cha Puke. And the answer is buffering is the demarcation of an area around the geographical feature. Correct. It refers to when you create zones within the predetermined distance. Spatial query I've already done, spatial analysis done, disaster management link. Disaster risk identification is when we identify the risks of disaster at the pro at prioritize. Disaster plan management, we can be able to plan, especially for wetlands, those who are staying in the wetlands, we can be able to move them. Uh, assessments and also the disaster response. Mapping, when we talk about the mapping, map is a graphical representation drawn to scale of a natural and artificial features of the earth surface. We have got the orthophoto map and the topographical map. Orthophoto map, the scale is 1 is to 10,000, and the topographical is 1 is to 50,000. I think I've already asked, asked the question, you've already responded. Uh, it can tell us about our surroundings portrayal of a real image, and it gives us information without necessarily going to it. This is an example of a topographical photo. This is a digital satellite image of a photo map. I will know. You, you, are, you use only two maps, the topographical and the author photo map, isn't it? Yes. OK. Aerial photo, you are no longer using it. What about the GPS? Today, I won't talk much about the GPS because outside, the, oh, you are from outside. You saw the GPS. OK. Let me pass. It is a satellite-based navigation system made up of a network of satellites. Is that thing? Here are the types of GPS. These are the portable GPS. We use them to collect data. In conclusion, this presentation seeks to address the need for using GIS and spatial information in our district and local municipalities more accessible and understandable by the users. No matter how difficult the GIS journey is, it always starts with first step. So this will serve as first step on rewarding of looking at our reality through papers. You can just clap hands for me. Well, thank you very much. I've learned a lot today about GIS. I've learned things that I did not know, isn't it? Or I've added more information to the things that I or we knew already. 
There's no harm in adding more information. Uh, let's move on from GIS to remote sensing. Um, my name is Murungweni from there. My colleague is Mr. Dondofema. You have seen him outside, isn't it? He was demonstrating to you flying the drone, isn't it? Yeah, so you are planning to buy your own drone too, isn't it? Huh? How many are saying yes? No, you want to buy one. Okay, but yes, before you buy, there are rules and regulations that you need to follow. But it's interesting. I've been seeing adverts right now for so many drone pilots being hunted. So you are not lost as geographers. You are in the right place. So uh, before we go on, who can tell me what is remote sensing? Yes, a lot of them. Oh, uh, please just give anyone the mic. My name is Mama Zambanesa and I'm from Fifi Sopandari. My educator is Masambu Iki. And the answer is science of obtaining information about the objects. It's the science of obtaining information about the object. Correct, but there is something small, small that she left. If it was a two out of two, she would score a 1.5 out of two because of that small. Can you add the small that she left? The small that she left is that is the, is the science of obtaining information about an area or object from a distance. From a distance? Yes, I still see a hand. It's not me. Please, it's not me. I still see hands. Meaning to say, again, you will get a 1.5. This, so please give them to finish off this. Still feel there's something, okay? Uh, it's a science of obtaining um, information of, of an object from the distance without getting in contact with it. Thank you. That word contact is the one that was missing. Without getting in contact of the object being uh, photographed, being uh, taken the picture from, being whatever. So it's critical to say the object without being in physical contact. So we can talk of satellites. We saw the drone being flown outside there. It was flown up, which can go, but the limit, there is a limit anyway, but it can go as high as it can be and it can map the whole of this university without being in contact of the buildings that are here, without being in contact of the roads that we are seeing, without being in contact of even the vegetation or the rivers or the trees around here. So that's remote sensing. Alternatively, you can also define it as number two there, the ability to measure the properties of an object without touching it. It's the same thing. So you don't really need to write number one and number two, but you can choose either. So long you include the keyword. You can even write it in your own words, so long the two keywords are there. So long you include the term to say, without in contact, without touching the object. So we see here, this is the globe. We are part of the globe. We see this is a, a satellite checking or mapping the globe. And we see these satellites in space. There are so many of them. There is no one satellite sensor in the atmosphere. They are plentiful in the atmosphere. And these satellite sensors, they play different roles. Some of them, they are just there for maybe mapping, or they are useful for mapping like changes on the length, on the surface. Uh, well, I gave uh, the previous group. Okay, sorry, thank you. I'm being reminded that there's no changing at one. I will make sure by 10 to one we are done so that we, we, we go out. But ushers, please, when it is 10 to one, and I'm still talking, just wave your hand to, to stop me. Okay, thank you. So we are, I'm saying there are so plentiful of these satellites 
in space. Most countries, hmm, developed countries, countries like Russia, countries like America, the Science of Space Agents, they have got many of these satellites. So I was challenging you students sitting here that you are learners at grade 10, 11, 12, isn't it? Whatever grade, start thinking of being uh, our space scientists. Are we together? Because we want also to launch our own satellite in space so that we capture information about our country, we capture the developments about our country, at the same time, we also, it's for security reasons. We spy also what is happening around us. So it's very important, an important career. Um, let's see how remote sensing, this is the basic, basics of remote sensing, how we capture the information, how we finally end up saying, I have or we have remote sensing data. So what happens is, no, 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 no. We start with the sun there as the source of energy. This energy radiates or illuminates, passes through the atmosphere into the until it reaches a sea there, that is the ground, that is where we are. We are interested in capturing information on the ground. So as we capture this information, it is not all the energy that is released from the sun there that it reaches a sea. Some of the energy is reflected back before it, it even reaches sea. That is, uh, should I say, detailed remote sensing that you will learn. I know most of you are going to join us here in two, three, four years to come. It's fine. You can learn more. But this satellite HD, what is it doing there? It's recording the reflections from the ground. If we check outside there, Let's talk of where we are, where we are familiar with. We have a car park, you were outside. How many noticed the roof type of the car park? We, we did not bother, but we know that they are roof types outside there. We also have different buildings here with the different roof colors. We also have outside there some roads that are surfaced with concrete, isn't it? We saw them. Some, if you go up there, they are not surfaced. So how they appear on a satellite image as this satellite is taking the pictures from the surface, they appear differently. But that's the reason why we always verify. I said if you are doing remote sensing, you need to be familiar with the area. If you are not familiar, visit it. If you can, visit it several times so that you are able to interpret the information you are seeing on the satellite correctly. Because I will, I will shed more light as we go further. So what is happening at E? There's transmission, reception, and processing. So on the ground, there is a room that is receiving and processing this information from the satellite. And after processing, where is the information sent? At F, what is happening at F? There is interpretation of this information. We have to interpret. Remember, I was talking of roof, different roof types, different roads. You need now as a bring in your GIS, create layers, interpret this information, put them, I learned you were taught about, add different attributes. Now you are keying in that information. You are interpreting. Ah, sorry. I'm always pressing the wrong button. Okay. And we have the output here. Whether these features, the rod, or the dam, it's a building, it's a field, whatever. That's what we get at G. We apply. The bottom line is we apply what we have got, what has been collected from the satellite images.
They are many. They are plentiful with different uh, specifications that I will share with you. Let me, I've talked about the acquisition. This slide, let me jump and go to the next one. The visible light, our eyes only see color from this wavelength, from 400 to 700 nanometers. This is the visible. I was telling the other group, the previous group, to say, don't worry about this. Now we cannot learn this today and finish. It's a course about color combinations where we are ending up saying, how do I get a red color? How do I get a blue color? How do I get a white color? You combine. So it's, it's, it's something, but for now, for remote sensing, we are saying within this wavelength, that's our visible. Of course, we have something which is beyond the visible wavelength, where we go to the infrared, to the TV, ETC. Uh, this, with remote sensing, we have different resolutions. For now, let me say, at least leave this room if you were not away. Mastering just two. The other two, you keep reading them and revising them. The two I'm talking about is number one, whenever you hear of spatial resolution, don't crack your mind and think, what is this spatial resolution? Spatial is talking of space. How distribution of pixels in space. Are we together? The next one is temporal resolution. Temporal, when you hear of temporal, just think of time. Going back, we have different sensors, isn't it? The way they, we, uh, they take the image of this university depends with the type of sensor. They come on different times. We call it revisit period. If they take a, the picture of University of Venda today, some might come back again to take the same University of Venda after 16 days. Some come back within 24 hours. Why am I saying this is very critical? Because you are a, our future may be disaster managers, isn't it? Disaster strike today. You do want a sensor that will show you pictures after 30 days when people are already suffering. So you choose a correct sensor. That is uh, what a revisit time, which is like within hours, within maximum maybe, maybe days. And then we also have the spectral and the radiometric resolutions, which I will elaborate later. So with spatial, I remember I told you we are talking of pixels, size of a satellite image. For instance, we have uh, some like the Landsat imagery, Landsat sensor that has a resolution. Some of them have got 30 meter resolution. And these sensors which are cost or low cost, they have the range between 30 to 1,000 meters. In other words, what we are saying is the image, for it to be visible, for you to interpret on the ground, it will be shown as a, a pixel of 30 meters by 30 meters. Don't, don't worry about that. And high fine spatial resolutions, these ones are very high resolutions with a maximum of four meters. And we can give an example of spot images. They are accurate, four meters. Even this building is taller than four meters. But we have a satellite that can take a picture of that building up to 0.41. They are accurate. But however, they are there. But it depends with the purpose of what you want to use with those sensors. 
and some of them may not be freely available or they may be freely available later in time. Um, okay, so that's about the pixels. Okay. Now, this is a MODIS imagery at 500 meters spatial resolution. I asked the previous group to say, let's assume we don't know what these pixels are representing, isn't it? So, this is a pixel, this is a pixel. This blob alone has got four pixels. But because this feature here and this feature there is the same feature, this feature there is the same feature, but if you come here, this feature is the same up to that, this feature is a little bit different, and this feature is another different feature. But I was saying this, let's say it's a rod. This also is a rod. This also is a rod. What do you think would make it diff appear differently on the image? Please give him or her. Uh, my name is Balo Boni. I'm from Chitama High School. And my teacher is Mr. Joe. So, the reason is, those roads, if were roads, they will have different surface. It's just because they have different surface. Thank you. Clap hands for him. So he was listening. So long the feature being captured has got different surface, it appeared differently on the image. So it is now your duty as you are interpreting the, if the image to say, this is a rod, but it's gravel or rod. This is a rod, but it's sad in a black surface. This is a rod, but it's a concrete surface rod. Seemingly, it happens with different types of cell, ETC. So that is key, what he, he, he said, and it's important. This is why we say we go out to verify. It's the same thing with the buildings here. They can all be rooftops, but because one is painted red, the other one is there's a different roof color type, they also might appear differently on the image. But it does not necessarily mean to say the features are different. They may be the same. Thank you. This one is an example of a Landsat imagery at 30 meter resolution. We see the background is more of blackish and a few pixels that are brighter there. So I was saying maybe, we are saying maybe because we haven't verified, we are not familiar with the area. Remember I said you have to be familiar with the area. We don't know what this area is, but if you have knowledge of the uh, Landsat image, you can say, ah, maybe the black background is water, if you have got the knowledge of interpreting these images. And um, so this is a spot image. Remember we said spot normally is, it has got very high resolution. It can take up to max four meters from the ground. So you can even see that there are tall buildings. You can see all the different features. And I, uh, it's unfortunately we did not uh, uh, indicate where this urban or built up area is from. So it has to do with spatial resolution and with spectral resolution. Um, my timekeepers remind me. Yes, thank you. Uh, spectral resolution now looks at the number of spectral bands in which sensor collects reflected radiance. Because we remember saying the energy from the sun radiates passes through the atmosphere into ground and then reflects the information back. So we out of those, we have some which are very coarse, like the panchromatic film, the mouth spectral sensors are of medium, and we also have some which are very high, like the hyperspectral sensors. They detect hundreds of narrow bands. In other words, if they detect hundreds of narrow bands, it means they are 
very, very detailed. And also, being too detailed would mean to say they also occupy so much space. You need space for such detailed images. They occupy so much. Even if in your, your saver, you need to make sure you have enough space, enough saver space, enough uh, hard drives, external drives to keep this data. You see it, many of you who are going to use this data and process it, what I, um, I mean by requiring space. Temporal resolution, I spoke about it. We cannot repeat it because it's talking about revisiting the same spot. How often? Some 24 hours, some after three days, some between four and 16 days. It depends on what you want to use the sensor for. You can choose. But if you want low temporal resolution, they visit after 16 days. But remember, I said, depending on your duty and your role and what you want to do. Okay, this still talks about temporal resolution to say to revisit is 16 days, some revisit is 11 days. It, so it means if it passes the place on the 2nd of July, the next time you see it is on the 18th of July. That's what it simply this figure is simply explaining. So with the radiometric, the fourth one, is the ability of a sensor to record levels of brightness linked to differences in energy. So it measures in brightness. The way the red soil reflects on an image is different from black soil, is different from what other grayish soil types. So what is most important here is the contrast of the target. So if you are now familiar and experienced, you would know that if this kind is if this is this kind of brightness, then it's this area is composed of the red soils. This area is composed of the uh, blackish brown or soils, depending what you are, your study is focusing on and what you are doing. Uh, okay. This number 255, yep. did you learn about DN values? Not, not yet, isn't it? Yeah. So let, let us let me leave it. You will learn it in future. Because those are DN what call them DN values, digital values that are used. Remember I showed you the pixels. Each pixel has a number. And it is recorded in the range of one to two hundred and fifty-five. It's okay. Let me leave it for now. Let me go on to the applications of this remote sensing. How many? What Thank you. Just give me two minutes so that I tell them the application of remote sensing. Remote sensing is up two minutes. Oh, she's complaining, she's angry. We apply remote sensing, for instance, in urban planning, how for mapping and updating the, our cities. We also do, for, for, it's important for urban sprawl. We see the squatter camps. You can map them in real time. If we requested the municipality here to say, give us the images or the recordings, or we can even use our Google Earth to check to La Mela municipality in 1980 and to La Mela municipality today, we see that there's maybe a lot of genuine structured plant and a lot of urban sprawl structures. So it's critical. It's also, uh, the benefits, you can look at them. So this one was showing on the road construction from a satellite image. In agriculture, it's critical. We apply also remote sensing images for what purposes, crop acreage estimation. We often hear, even reporting on the news to say that this year we are going to have 
uh, like a bamba harvest of maize, wheat, it's because they use the satellite images to fly around all the agricultural zones and they can estimate how much they are expecting and that is very important. And we can also use it in crop modeling, crop forecasting and estimation, and even in monitoring, monitoring of crops, monitoring of natural forest, monitoring of the natural vegetation, monitoring of all the activities that we may be uh, doing on the earth's surface. So milk sensing plays a very critical role. This one, okay, is it explaining further an example of in agriculture where a banana plantation filled when it once it was affected by um, frost and how it recovered, and this was the great use of remote sensing images. I think, lastly, it's critical. We were experiencing floods in our region, from Mozambique going inwards into South Africa, so we need remote sensing to supply us with the latest information there are remote sensing sensors there that are 24 hours monitoring what is happening. And they have a revisit of 24 hours, which is good. Today, the University of Bender, tomorrow is down by cyclone. We can be able to use satellite images for monitoring and for flood management, etc. So, yeah, let me end because examples are so many of remote sensing, so many you can apply them in so, many. so thank you, thank you very much. Let us say thank you. Uh, do, we, do we have a announcement for the for the dance? Okay.
to have some lunch outside. But I will be taking you outside per road, ne? because there's not enough space outside. If you have checked while you are entering, there's a construction going on. So we need to go outside per night. But firstly, we'll allow our leaders and our educators to go out first. Are you fine?